Good morning. It falls to me to welcome Bishop Malcolm, but also to give it one or two notices. Okay. Um, just to remind you that potatoes and pancakes are on Tuesday, uh, 12 till 2 here, and it's six pounds. Also wonderful things like a raffle produce and books. Um, Carol would like some help setting up the tables after coffee today if people are uh, available. And uh, uh, a thanks to Francis and Martin for hosting the coffee morning yesterday, which was thoroughly enjoyable. So thank you. Thank you very much. The first hymn echoes my feelings. Tis good, Lord, to be here. Good to be with you today. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Yes, it's good to be here. Uh, it's good to be here on this Sunday before Lent when our readings take us to the Transfiguration. That's what that hymn was about. Uh, it, otherwise, we wouldn't have been singing about being on the plain. Uh, on the mountaintop, because here you're, as I'm very aware, you're on the plains down by the river, because the sun was shining gloriously in Swanwick when I set off this morning, and I came down into the holy mist, <laughs> that the holy cloud that always surrounds Repton. Perhaps not always, but today the cloud and the brightness are perhaps our theme and the revelation of God in different ways uh, as we meet God in Jesus and as our lives and as our hopes for the world and for our families and friends and communities, as our hopes are shaped by the story and the reality of the presence of Jesus. So let us pray. Almighty God, 
to whom all arts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Holy God, you know the disorder of our sinful lives. Set straight our crooked hearts and bend our wills to love your goodness and your glory. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit for the reading. Today's reading is from 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 3 to 6. Paul declares that our minds are not veiled to the truth of the gospel, but we have the light of Christ shining in our hearts, revealing Christ's glory. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of the darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On the sheet of paper you have a copy of Psalm 50, the first six verses. We'll say that everyone joining in the bold print and me saying the rest. The Mighty One, God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth. From the rising of the sun to the very sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty. Our God comes and will not be silent. He summons the heavens above. Gather to me this consecrated people. And the heavens proclaim his righteousness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, world without end. Amen. Our gradual hymn, O Raise Your Eyes on High and See, 544.
Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord according to Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared unto them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He didn't know what to say, for, he was, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they'd seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May God give us grace, not only to hear his word, but also to live by it, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Please sit down. I hope it's all right that I've borrowed the lectern. <laughs> Thank you. It's really good to be here at a time when you're looking forward, looking forward to your new, is he rector or what will he be? He'll be vicar. You call him vicar. Uh, Stephen coming, to, and it, it's wonderful. I know Stephen quite well, uh, and it is, he's going to be such a great fit for this parish. All sorts of good things to look forward to. Well, this morning, uh, it was a, is, as I said, because of the cloud and the sunshine, particularly appropriate <laughs> uh, for um, transfiguration. But I don't really want to focus on the detail so much of, the, of that story. I hope that the reading of the Gospel reminded us of it enough. It's enough to say, perhaps, that what happened that day when Jesus climbed the mountain with Peter and James and John was absolutely extraordinary. The brightness, the crystal clarity of their vision of Jesus there, his clothes shining brighter than anybody could bleach them, uh, it's followed by this mysterious cloud obscuring everything. What a contrast between revelation and obscuring from which this voice comes. This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. Now we don't know whether Mark writing the gospel is consciously referring to events in the Old Testament. Uh, but there are certainly echoes, aren't there, of the Israelites' migration from slavery through the desert to the Promised Land as they were led by a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. And in a way, this reminds us that 
with Jesus, in Jesus, we are all mi- on a migration, migrants on a passage from a bad place to a good place, from slavery to freedom. And here is light for our path, a guide for our journey. Unless we get too pleased with ourselves or with our own understanding, the light and the cloud keep alternating. No sooner do we grasp the truth than it slips from our hands like that children's story, Malcolm's Runaway Slope. Anybody know the story? It's a good one. Malcolm in the bath holds the soap and it disappears and it gets everywhere. It disappears and ends up in or having all sorts of adventures. But this is the truth of the gospel is sometimes like that. You have to follow it to a new place, to new circumstances of your lives and of our world. That cloud of unknowing Henry Vaughan, the poet, described this cloud, this experience of God in, as someone you can't quite, or something you can't quite grasp, as, as a dazzling darkness. What a wonderful expression. When you begin to know, but soon realize that you know nothing at all. A dazzling, too great to comprehend. For me this morning, there are four aspects of this light, this dazzling light, this dazzling darkness. A dazzling too great to comprehend. The first is the light of creation. The universe, or as we're taught to say these days, potentially universes, though that's hard to kind of make sense of already, we're in something too great to comprehend. St. Paul, who never speaks directly about the transfiguration, but clearly seems to know about it because he picks up its themes so much, in our epistle today says, it's God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The beginning, Jesus was there as the living word, when God said, let there be light. I'm a fan of Brian Cox, the popular physicist, who recently has been sharing his thoughts and his wonder about the origins and the future of the universe and of our place as humans within it. I share his amazement with the very fact of our existence. I'm sure lots of us Just think, wow, we exist. Not only do we exist, but we know we exist. And we have to try and make sense of it. Though he has no belief in God, Brian Cox finds this, the fact that human beings have learned to understand some aspects of least, at least of our existence and to find meaning in it is a sort, source of fascination. I saw one interview in which he said that it's possible that if in the end, as some, it sometimes looks, if in the end we do destroy our planet or make it uninhabitable for humans, it means there no, may, may be nobody there in the universe who understands it or who can seek to understand its meaning. Which is quite a thought, that all that existence could happen and there'd be no understanding, no consciousness, no ability to understand. Many of us find in God, in nature, in creation, that this dazzling, this incomprehensible beauty and extraordinariness, this amazing reality. I was, no, I think I may have said this before here, uh, one of my first kind of steps on a journey to faith was out in the wilds in Northumberland and I was telling children about this, about being in the storm, walking the dog and finding myself shouting into the, shouting into the storm and feeling this great presence of, of, of something that I couldn't quite grasp or make sense of. And I asked the children at St. James's school in Derby, do you know what I mean? I, I was feeling a bit helpless because I couldn't really, I didn't know whether they thought I was bonkers. And they'd have been right. Um, But they said, yes! They knew exactly what I meant. Because they too 
have this extraordinary sense of awe and wonder about the things we don't understand but which are real and present themselves in nature and in creation. A dazzling brightness too great to comprehend. The second incomprehensible dazzling brightness is what we've been celebrating these last few weeks coming up to Candlemas, from Christmas to Candlemas, where lights and candles are everywhere. The light of the Incarnation, the light that shines in the darkness that no darkness can put out, as the Christmas Gospel tells us. The light that shines from Bethlehem, the light in the eyes of the infant Jesus presented in the temple, a light to lighten the Gentiles, the entire world. Our God contracted to a span incomprehensibly made man. The light of the glorious truth that God is with us in Jesus, taking his place with us, with the rest of us, taking the rough with the smooth, with us in every way, inspiring us to be with one another in the fight for freedom, for justice, for hope, for a future, for one another, for our communities, for our planet. A dazzling brightness, too great to comprehend. The third dazzling brightness, after creation and incarnation, is the mystery of salvation, of redemption. How it is that God was in Jesus Christ, reconciling the world to himself, making peace possible, breaking the chains of guilt and shame, freeing us with forgiveness and for forgiveness. The sky went dark the day he was crucified, but come sunrise on Easter day, the glory of God is revealed once and for all, and somehow this is the day of a thousand new beginnings, a day for seeing everything and everyone in a new light. I don't yet, and this is a bit of an admission for a bishop really, I don't yet fully understand what happens when we turn to God, when we turn to Christ, accepting our need for what only God can give, only that something very significant does happen, and that what happens is because we know for sure that we are loved. It dawned on me as a child, singing in the choir those words, it is a thing most wonderful, almost too wonderful to be, that God's own Son should come from heaven and die to save a child like me. And of course, from there is a green hill, we may not know, we cannot tell what pains he, Jesus, had to bear, but we believe it was for us he hung and suffered there. The dazzling darkness of Good Friday, which we'll be marking really quite soon, and the dazzling light of Easter so soon after, together enfold us in the love of God and make possible a whole new world, the new creation about which St. Paul spoke. A dazzling brightness, too great to comprehend. The fourth dazzling brightness, my friends, is our glorious Christian hope. Of course, that means the promise of eternal life, hope in the face of death, often the experience of those who have died, as it were, on the, in the operating theatre and lived to tell the tale. A sense of brightness, people often say, who've been through that extraordinary experience. A strange sense of homecoming, they've said. A familiar brightness. One of our church wardens in this diocese has written a book about such extraordinary experiences. But frankly for me, whilst I have this hope of eternal life and of life in heaven after I've died, for me Christian hope is not just about what happens when I die. That really is not a small part of it, but only part of it. It is also the glorious hope of this new creation of which Paul spoke, a world made new through the love of Jesus, who taught us to pray every day, 
Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's this prayer of transformation about heaven coming down to earth that's the brightest, that's one of the brightest and most hopeful elements of our Christian life. Saying it often and learning to live it and inhabit its climate of hope and brightness, of renewal day by day, that opens our eyes to possibilities for grace and goodness in a world which I'm sure you'd agree with me is desperately in need of help, of salvation, of peace. This dazzling brightness, too great to comprehend, Jesus, Peter, James, and John, when the cloud had disappeared, stepped down the hill to face horrendous challenges. But they would never forget this day, the day their vision was extended, their hope kindled forever. Years later, Peter would write with fond memory, we were with him on the holy mountain. And Paul would write, Paul, who wasn't there but must have heard about it, would write of, a, of, write of, as a believer, being changed by day by day from glory to glory to ever-increasing brightness, reflecting the glory of God. So pray with me, if you will. Open our eyes, O Lord, that we may see the wonder, the dazzling brightness of your love that we may live by it and see your kingdom come, your will be done and your glory be revealed here in Repton and in all the world. Amen. Now we stand and declare the Christian faith together in the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. The response to Lord in your mercy Please say, hear our prayer. Everlasting Father, we thank you for sending your Son to us so that we could know both his divinity and his humanity. We come into a season when we can understand the risen Christ and why Jesus was sent to us. We come offering you praise and thanksgiving 
and as your people, asking that you will listen today to our hearts and give us comfort, rest, and guidance. So we now pray in confidence to the Father, who has given us life and a purpose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you the church, which has been brought together as one through faith in you. Thank you for gathering us together today so that we can share in your mission for the church. Help us to make the church relevant in the lives of our parish community. We particularly pray for the diocese leadership, the PCC, and our interregnum vicars who have been so faithful and consistent over the past few years. We pray for our new vicar, Steve Short, and ask that you will give us all ideas about how we can support him as he arrives. You know what he needs, and we ask that you will put on our heart ways in which we can participate in this new beginning in our church. Help us to say, here I am, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, we thank you for the natural world and all of its resources. We pray for those who are affected by the floods. You have made this world for us, but expect us to maintain it and take care of the resources you have given us. Help us to provide for others and share the gifts we've been given as we give to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to bring before you the desperate situation in the Middle East and other war-torn areas around the world, such as Ukraine and Sudan. We pray for all the innocent victims of these wars and ask that you will stop the suffering and let peace prevail. We ask that you would give our leaders the tools to find ways to stop the violence and suffering. We think of all of those impacted and know your goodness and mercy reigns. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing Father, we pray for all those in our community who have illnesses that are both seen and unseen. You have called us to be members of your body so that when one suffers, we all suffer together. We ask for your comfort and healing power to bring hope to those who are not well. We pray that all who are in hospital may feel the Spirit's healing presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, your love reaches beyond the grave. Be with us in our mourning as we pray for all who are coming to the end of their time here on earth and for all those who have recently died. Be with us and with those we love and those who have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our role in doing the work of Christ. As we come into Lent, Help us lift our eyes to you and come to understand you better. Gracious God, we thank you for hearing our prayers. And as we move into the coming week, let the power of your spirit flow through us that we may come alive in Christ, be given strength beyond our own, and enable us to do what you call us to do for the sake of your kingdom here on earth. We say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're able to do so, please stand. Peace to you from God our Father who hears our cry. Peace from his Son Jesus Christ whose death brings healing. Peace from the Holy Spirit who gives us life and strength. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We offer one another a sign of peace.
So we sing, 414, eternal light, eternal <laughs> splendor. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you've created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. 
in the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You gave us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord! As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he ate supper with his friends. And taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with wisdom, with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Let us sit or kneel to pray. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we and may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Body of Christ.
O holy God, we behold thy glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Grant that we who are partakers at his table may reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We sing 396, Christ is the world's true light. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, in the name of Christ. Christ.